So what is Dick Slater doing in this match? Listen, I, Dick Slater's a great performer, but... <laughs> oh, okay, so not, here's what happened. Uh, what, what, what... Okay. You saw the opening graphic, and right. Funk was supposed to be the tag team partner, even in the right. graphic. But the segment we just saw, that wasn't a note that was really your contract that said you're obligated to sing rap songs. It was, in fact, a, a, a doctor's note mm-hmm. that showed that Terry Funk had just had arm surgery and was unable to compete. Ah. So he was not going to be in the main event, but he had a substitute lined up, and you'd find right. out who it was shortly. And, so and there he is. To a clip of Terry Funk in the hospital bed convalescing. And so now this is another one of Gary Hart's associates, Dick Slater, taking the spot. And they're going to go 19 minutes and 16 seconds. So this is all kind of on the storyline of Flair Funk, this whole story here. is yes, basically what it is. Right. We're building towards um, <clears throat> New York Knockout, the Clash of the Champions in December, which is the I Quit match. With Flair and which we, and that'll be the blow off. Which we've already done. It's in our archives, I do believe. You know, I've yeah, done that. I match. just mean, you know, this storyline. Right. The storyline. I, yeah, I get it. Um, so, you know, in 1989, I don't know if this was, if Flair and Funk was considered the feud of the year by Dave Meltzer or not, but I would say it's one of the top feuds. Oh, for sure. That and, and Yeah. You got to remember, in 89, you had Hogan and Savage. And then you had Hogan right. and Zeus. So you had two really good ones on that side. That, I mean, at least in a lot of attention. And sure. here you had Flair and Steamboat, and then immediately Flair Funk. I've always thought 89 was one of Flair's best years. He would say, not even close, 86 was it. 86, really? Flair thinks that he was did his year. best work in 85 and 86. And certainly he probably had his best years up to that point financially in those years. Sure. I... uh in 85, 86, especially 86, I remember those were the, that was the Great American Bash on tour and all those stadium shows that he had. So, and where he, you know, he dropped the belt to Dusty and Dusty dropped it back to him. And that was some good stuff. I was, I was on a lot of those, a lot of those tours. That was a lot of fun. That's when wrestling was fun and we're making it fun again. Boy, great back body drop. You got the closed captioning on like I do? I do. <laughs> yeah. They just called they just called uh, Mood of the Purple. Your internet kind of sucks at the uh, Bulldog Stadium. Say again. I said, well, I'm not at the Bulldog Stadium. I'm I'm at a I'm at a radio station. Okay, your internet I should have great sucks and it cut out. So the closed yeah. captioning said what? Pearl of the Orient. This is what they called him. The Pearl of the Orient. What's wrong with that? You like we're a big radio studio here with... No. It's kind of... You can't use the word Orient or Oriental anymore, can you? No, no, you can use Orient. Okay. You just can't use Oriental. Yeah. Why, I don't know. Well, you can if you're talking about Oriental Trading Company. I mean, that's a company's name. I get that. Well, you just said you didn't get it. Well, I... I get... All right, Flair, Look, chop like, it away like, now. Here's the thing I've learned, right, since I married okay. into a Jewish family. You can't say Jew either. <laughs> I didn't know that was a thing, sort of like you and Oriental. Like, in my yeah. head, I was just like... Well, I didn't know. You can't Sorry. say Jew. I, I I thought I thought no, Jew was not allowed to say Jew. It's I thought a Jew slur. Was, it is. If you say Jewish, it's fine. But if you say Jew, if you take off the ish, it's a slur. Dude, I'm from Alabama. I'm surrounded by Baptists, a couple Methodists. I, right. I didn't know that. I didn't know that so, either. <clears throat> the first time Megan's mom cooked for me, she was excited for me to try her famous matzo ball soup, and she made like all this other stuff, but it was all stuff from, you know, sort of. You know, the Jewish religion. Right. And I didn't know uh-huh. that I was, it was not cool if I was like, wow, that's my first time eating like real life Jew food. <laughs> that's not and, cool at all. I got yeah. lots of weird stares and I was like, well, I've said something I didn't mean to <laughs> that has clearly offended everyone. And I'm very sorry. <laughs> yeah. 
Wow. You learn something every day. It used to well, not be that know. way. Well, thought, it, it, it used to not be that way, Conrad. It just the world has changed. So like my other friends, like uh, like Dave Green and, and Shuley, like they mm-hmm. routinely refer to themselves as Jews. Yes, they do. They're like, oh, this Jew bastard. And blah, blah. I right. guess it's like, it's yes. sort of like the N word, right? Right. Exactly. Like, uh, you could like African Americans can say it, but we can't. So I guess in, in Judaism, mm-hmm. we can't say Jew, but they can. I didn't know that was the rule. Now that I, I got it, right? I'm good. With it. But like it's it's sort of like um, <coughs> the word midget. You know, you're not supposed to say that either. But like our friend Dylan Hornswoggle, mm-hmm. he's fine with it. He says midget all the time, and he's cool right. with anybody else says midget. But if you meet uh, a little person, you're you don't know, so you're just like a little person. And I don't know. So I, I just, as a rule, I don't say that word. Right. I was told, hey, that's a slur. That's a kid calling me an N word. I'm like, oh, fuck. I didn't know. Because right. I grew up, especially in wrestling, you know, those old posters, it would be like, you know, plus a midget match and the girls. You know, that's why they, <laughs> sure. you know, like the girl. Well, now you can't say girls. It's women's matches. Right. But you can't say midget either. And, so, hmm. and I realize I've just said it a bunch here. And I guess. Right. I, I, I get that. Listen, I, I don't. Mean. I know what you mean, and uh, I'm I'm perplexed about something. First of all, I I don't call Hornswoggle Mitchie. He's a sawed off little fuck, right? As a far runt, as I'm bastard, a runt yeah. bastard. Yes, he is. Uh, but you can't say girls anymore. I mean, I yeah. I do I I do know that women's has a better, a more mature connotation to it than girls does. But girls not the word no, girl is not a slur. That. No, you can't say it. It's demeaning. It would be like if you said, "All right, up next, the boys are going to wrestle. We're going to find out who's the boys' heavyweight champion." Okay, I get it. So it's like you wouldn't call them boys. That'd be demeaning. So it's the same thing. But again, times change, cultures change, everything is different. But <clears throat> Pearl of the Orient, not necessarily bad, but you couldn't say, oh, he's our favorite Oriental wrestler today. Yeah. Unless you're talking about, and again, the wrestling company that AEW is partnered with from China is OWE, mm-hmm. Oriental Wrestling Entertainment. So in order to just say the name of the company, you have to say Oriental because that's the name of the company. But you yeah. probably shouldn't refer to the performers as Oriental. I know it's a fucking lot. So, all right. Well, okay. All right. Very well said. And meanwhile, uh, what do you think of this match so far? I think Not Dick Slater bad. would have had none of that conversation we just had and said whatever the <laughs> fuck he wanted to say. Exactly. He would have. Uh, it's showing me that uh, Slater can, in '89, could still perform. Man, he was a. Uh, Slater he was. Go Slater ahead. He was on KKK, top. KKK, right? Really? I think so. I thought that was, uh, I thought that was, no, it wasn't, Slater wasn't in the KKK. Yeah, yeah, I think he was. No, that was, that was the other day. Oh, was it Dick Murdoch? Dick Murdoch, yes. Yeah, I'm getting my dicks confused. (laughs) Which is the first time we've ever had that problem here on What Happened When. You ever get your dicks confused? Not with anyone's, no. Mm. You do realize by calling Lois. I'll never get late again. You do realize that. It wasn't looking so hot before either, you know? (laughs) Well, you just confirmed it. Well, maybe you should just go home and play her. You singing Bitch Better Have My Money. And you start the song with, It ain't nothing like black pussy on my dick. (laughs) Yeah, I'll do that. Um... And then you could tell her, bend over to the front and touch your toes. I'm going to reach back and hold my nose. Oh, my like God. That. That's what you said. Okay. Let me ask you this. In 2019, and I know that, that song is, is kind of old, right? Bitch better have so, my money. I think it's from 1992, believe it or not. Okay. Can they get away with songs like lyrics like that in today's music? Do they get oh, away yeah. with that shit? Yeah. How, do they get, how do they get away with this stuff when... Come here. I, I don't I just don't understand it. I we we just been we've been talking about, you know, Oriental and using the 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 word Jew instead of Jewish and girl instead of women and you get called on the carpet for that, but all these rap artists get away with all this stuff? How do they do that? It's they're magic men is what they are. What do you mean? I got I got hoes. Well, they just they 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 skirt they they just get a buy with this stuff. I don't know. Here's it. here's a new song from this year that blew up. Okay, there's lots of, there's lots of stuff on here, but okay, like the um, here you go. 
Nope. Bitch, I'm a star. These wishing. <laughs> he say hungry, this pussy the kitchen. <laughs> Jesus. God almighty. Okay, well, more power to them if they can get away with it. What's wrong with that? And we have a lot of friends in the hip hop in the hip hop culture that that love us and no, listen to hip hop sure. music and yeah, listen to rap. I get it. And you know what? I'm I'm going to be I'm going to be very honest with you. I I feel very uncomfortable about reading these lyrics. I know it's become very popular on this podcast, so I get that. But I have a I don't know how to say this, but I'm going to say it. I have a newfound respect for rappers. I mean, it's not my type of music, but there's some of the things I'm, I'm digging, you know, like the 50 cent thing that we did on karaoke. Right. I was kind of into that, like, uh, ignition from, uh, R Kelly. That was pretty cool. And I never did appreciate it before, before I met Conrad Thompson. How about that? And before I started doing the lyrics here on what happened when, so there, he can be learned. So there you go. See what you've done for me? You've brought me back into wrestling, and you've gotten me involved in hip-hop. I even got gold chains on now, man. And earrings. And earrings. And since you got that Tony Khan money, we're going <laughs> to get rid of that middle-of-the-mall CZ shit. We're getting you some VVSs. <laughs> VVSs? Yeah. Okay. Is that a is that another zirconium? Uh, I don't even know how you don't know what that is. I don't know what that is. VVS is. I have no uh, idea. So when you when you're looking to buy diamonds, okay, oh, for, cl for clarity, yeah, there's different ratings. Gotcha. VVS is short for very very slight, and we're okay. talking about the inclusion, so the little bits of carbon. Wow. So VVS is like pretty high up on the scale. You you're obviously a man that knows these diamonds. Well, I mean, I, I am married, you know. <laughs> so am I. I just went to it. I just went to say, does this look good? Yeah, we'll buy it. I didn't well, say. You got, you got to know about color. You got to know about cut. You got to know about clarity. Okay. So, like, the very best is like a flawless diamond. That's very, very expensive, almost mm -hmm. impossible to get. But then they got different levels. So like VVS one is really the highest grade that that mortal humans obtain. Yeah. Then there's VVS two, and then you get into VS1, VS2, and then SI1 and SI2. And that's probably what you bought, Lois, like a SI2. But now that you got that con money, she may walk in one day and say, you know what, uh, TS, I'm going to need me one of them VVS ones. And then, you know, you're about to go mm -hmm. spend more on her left finger than you did on a new Ford Explorer. Mm. So Gary yeah. Hart interfering here. Mm. Muda. Seems to have the upper hand on his brother in paint, Mr. Stinger. Slow rolling him over. Whoa. Kick out. Fans, the fans love that kick out, too. Look at them. They're into it. They thought that was it, especially after Gary Hart had interfered. Yeah. You see Bill After walking around the outside bothering people. Can I get a program after this? I mm -hmm. need two programs. Who do I see about the program? <laughs> not a pile driver, not a power bomb. What is this? It is a power bomb. Muscles him up. Pinning combination, kick out. That's ahead of its time. Not a lot of power bombs in 1989. No, you're right. And you know what? We, we've had a lot of silly talk. These these guys are working a pretty good match here, actually. I don't think these guys could have a bad match if they tried. Yeah. It gets a B mm -hmm. or a B plus in the torch. Right. How about the way he's setting Sting up here? To, oh, throw it across mm -hmm. the bottom rope. Nice maneuver. Old school. Don't see that very often these days. No, you don't. Is Dick Slater the one who had the Coors uh, membership where he could drink anywhere free, or is that too Dick Murdoch? Mm, I don't know that story, so I, I can't answer that. You can't answer shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. That's not true. I can answer some things. Oh, a big body slam on the outside. <laughs> I see if Stinger can answer the call here. Oh, Muda's going to do a little work on him. Yeah. He? I'm surprised. I, I think they I think they swerved us all. I thought the finish was uh, Gary Hart, man. That was a good swerve. Look at so the old totally miss Muda the, throwing Sting into the guardrail. Flair coming right. to the rescue here. Mm hmm Laying in the chops on Muda, keeping him at bay, trying to let his man Sting get back <laughs> into the ring. That one lady popping Muda the bird. Uh -huh. 
Keep you know, it classy, South Carolina. Yeah, you know who's in the audience here, don't you? Our, our friend Peggy Lathan. Oh, of course she is. Yeah, she's here somewhere. But I don't want to say her name because she'll get pissed off at us and won't speak to us. No, nah, she'll still talk to us. Yeah, Clemson. I, I spent some time with her a few weeks ago in Charlotte. Yeah, when Clemson loses this year, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look her up. Oh, we'll call her on the show. Yeah, we will. That's a, you got her number? Of course you do. You got everybody's yeah, number. Not damn. You, know what? No. you got everybody's number. I got you. Oh. God, Sting was. You know, the kids loved Sting. And you know the kid that loved Sting as much as anybody else back in the day was Cody, Cody Rhodes, man. He was a big Stinger guy. Oh, he was his favorite. By the way, yep. uh, Clemson here had hmm. just beaten Florida State 34-23 uh-huh. days prior to this. Okay. They'd go on quite the roll. They would beat uh, Furman, Florida State, Virginia Tech, and Maryland, but then drop a match to Duke. Can you believe that? <sighs> drop a match. They had two losses that season, and they were to Duke and Georgia Tech. Good God. That's that's where Clemson was in 89. Sacks yeah. shit, boy. <laughs> I, I think mean, seriously, uh, Georgia Tech that year was seven and four. Yeah, and the Duke football team? Are you kidding? In 1989, they were eight and four. I mean, how, how in the world do you squeak out ten and two if you're Clemson, and you're losing the teams that are seven and four and eight and four? That just shows you how weak your schedule really is. Gonna set up the figure four here on Muda. Oh, Dirty Dick Slater has something to say about that. Slater have a cast on there? Yep. Okay. Yeah, I see it. Okay. And and Flair just dropped his blade <laughs> on the edge of the <laughs> canvas there. It's right in front of Bill after. Hopefully he's not getting a tight <laughs> shot of the blade. <laughs> hey, does anybody drop this blade? Is this yours? Is it, I, I have I, I, this I, for my program? I need the program. <laughs> I can do karaoke. Yeah? Is wrestling broken? I didn't know it was... No, it's wrestling fixed. It's fixed. Thank you. I, was like, Thank you. I, I didn't know it was broken. Oh, look oh, at there. There it is. Now, there it is. So process how crazy this is in 1989. First of all, he's not in the match because he had arm surgery. So he comes out with the arm wrapped up uh-huh. and the sleeves cut off of the, of the jacket. <laughs> and uh, he's got a plastic he, bag around Flair's head. He's trying to kill him. And Flair is legit claustrophobic and is having a legit panic attack right now. And is holding the front of it open. He's not taking it off because he knows it's the gimmick, but he's holding it open because he's legit panicked. Yeah, I see it. Wow. But Took a lot of... You know, who, who's watching wrestling in 1989? Yeah. A kid, lot of kids. Right. And man, the, the number one thing you were told as a kid... At the grocery store, when they moved away from those paper sacks that they grew up with, with you know, when you were a kid and you would wear the Browns games, they went to these plastic ones. And went, oh, keep away from children! Oh, don't get near children, because kids were going to suffocate themselves with these things. And now, he put it on his head, and boy, you talk about controversy coming out of this. Phew. I know. We, the WWF back then, couldn't believe it. Now they brought that Brian Pillman. They brought that medical personnel. And to the point here the where you're thinking, right? You're thinking Flair's, Flair had a heart attack or he's dead or something, right? I mean, in, in real life, the police would have arrested him. Yeah, they, they even had to issue a statement on the September 16th WCW show. Jim Ross would read this from Jim Hurd. We're interested in providing exciting wrestling for all of our fans, but Terry Funk's on, attack will not be tolerated. Terry Funk is hereby suspended indefinitely from wrestling in the National Wrestling Alliance and will not compete in any event under our services. Huh. So they put the, the well, they tried to make it an, uh, obviously, they tried to make it sure. an angle. But they had yeah. to sort of appease the people who were upset, too. Right. Which probably didn't work. No. Roll the credits, Flair is dead. Can you believe Keith Mitchell is on that, and now... We were just hanging out with him at StarCast the other day as so he got ready for an AEW pay-per-view. It's funny how hmm. what's old is new again. Jim Ross, Tony yeah. Schiavone, Keith Mitchell, what the fuck? Right. Cream rises to the top is what I like to say there. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> you don't buy that one, do you? Hmm. There you go. Flair's dead. Well, we know that he's going to come back to life. We've already had two bouts of zombie flare. That's right. This may have been the first one. This is the second one after the plane crash. Yeah. Last thing JR said, they've gone too far. Boy, did they ever, Jim. Went way too far on this one. So there you go. Clash of the Champions, Fall Brawl 89. And uh, deep in our memory because of what we saw right at the end there. We should mention that uh, Halloween Havoc, the very first one, 1989, that they were building. We know what's going to be on tap there. It's the Thunderdome, bitch. Bruno <laughs> Sammartino is going to be your special guest referee. And we've got Ric Flair and Sting with Ole Anderson in their corner on one side. How about that for a pairing? Wow. And on the other side, the great Muda and Terry Funk with Gary Hart. So even though Funk would be suspended, they really wanted to build it there. Of course, that was the advertised match here at the Clash, but they would pay it off. And they hammered Halloween Havoc hard, dude. And they did pretty well. They drew 7,300 fans there in Philadelphia. And that is one of my absolute favorite pay-per-views. I love Halloween Havoc 89. I love 90 even more. Those early Halloween Havoc shows were just my absolute favorites. All right. Good times. Kill a, kill a bitch. Yep. Kill somebody. Kill a bitch. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Or kill a Ric Flair is what I was meaning there. Let's kill Did Rick. you think that? We were going to call Lois and talk to her about Blumpkins today when we started the show. No, I didn't. You never know what we're going to do on the show, but no, Tony, when I look at my clock, I feel like it's uh, it's about that time. And now into the Shivani bathroom in the master bath, there is Tony Shivani, and yes, he is sitting down. He is asking Lois for a Blumpkin, and Lois has taken a steel chair and hit him over the head with it harder than Sean Spears just hit Cody, the American Nightmare. Tony Schiavone is desperately out of time with a turd hanging out of his ass. We'll see you next week on What Happened When. We're on the MLW Radio Network. Every Monday we are on Patron. World Order and the Crow. Thunder Russo, Arquette Champ. Vinny Mac, simulcast. Tony's back with Conrad. Not your classy podcast. Watch a lot, try not to laugh. Lois rules can't pass. This wasn't the initial plan. Tom Zeke's a good looking man. Tom Zeke's a good looking man. Quandike Bill, make a chair. Tommy, come over here.